एवरीवन नमस्ते एंड सलाम वालेकुम पीपल हाय दिस इज मारिया खान यू आर मास्टर टीचर ऑफ बायोलॉजी हियर एट वेदांतु गाइस वेलकम टू माय सेशन एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू द सेकंड चैप्टर फ्रॉम आवर टर्म 2 दैट इज द एक्सक्रीटरी सिस्टम सो व्हाट आर द टॉपिक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टुडे सो बेसिकली दिस इज अ वन शॉट सेशन वेयर इन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑल द ऑल द टॉपिक्स व्हिच फॉल अंडर दिस चैप्टर so right from the various excretory products organs which assist in excretion and then the human excretory system rather the urinary system in detail the process of urine formation the composition of urine and how the output of urine is regulated and artificial kidneys so this is what we are going to study today so if you are curious and excited to study this chapter hit on the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to our channel and yes of course post me your in the chats okay so chalo let's get started so this is going to be a quick overview about how substances uh, which are unwanted are eliminated from our body okay so whenever metabolism takes place of the organic substances like carbohydrates proteins and fats for example let's take glucose so when the glucose is broken down during cellular respiration we get co2 plus h2o plus energy right so this co2 is eliminated with the help of lungs during exhalation and the water the water that is being formed is actually uh, eliminated either through sweat and then uh, when we drink a lot of water or when we consume a lot of juices so this water which has been consumed in excess that is eliminated by our body of course along with urine okay and uh, water many harmful substances get dissolved in it so it can be easily eliminated along with water right now when we talk about uh, uh, organic substances proteins right see our body can store excess of carbohydrates our body can store excess of fats but it cannot store proteins and that's the reason why this nitrogenous metabolic waste is being generated and to help eliminate that kidneys play a crucial role okay and then liver liver produces bile so guys this bile pigments are eliminated through feces okay uh, basically the red blood cells they are being destroyed right and uh, they are destroyed by the liver and uh, two pigments bilirubin and bilirubin are formed they are then released into the uh, small intestine and then they are further this pigments they are further process which actually gives the yellowish color to a fecal matter right so this is how the substances are being eliminated but if i talk about the nitrogenous substances if not eliminated uh, it can cause a severe damage and at times it may even lead to death and that's the reason why elimination of these nitrogenous metabolic waste products is very essential and kidneys play a crucial role over here and hence kidneys are called as c e o chief excretory organ okay however there are other organs also which help in elimination of this waste products so if we talk about skin skin helps in elimination of sweat now sweat contains water it contains salts uh, it contains uh, urea in small quantities it also helps in elimination of lactic acid okay so yeah skin in the form of sweat helps to eliminate all this products okay then if we talk about lungs helps to eliminate co2 and then comes the liver so guys ammonia ammonia is detoxified and converted into urea so this urea is produced in the liver and then eliminated via urine but yes liver also plays a prime role in eliminating the waste so if we talk about all these organs kidneys are the ceo okay chief excretory organs so let us understand the uh, structure of this kidney in detail okay so now let us understand the chief excretory organs that is kidneys in detail so where exactly are they located in our body now kidneys are located at the lower back side of the abdomen on either sides of the vertebral column if you see this is the right kidney and this is the 
left kidney. So right kidney is placed slightly lower as compared to left kidney. You know why? It's because of the presence of the largest gland of the body, liver over here, which pushes the kidney uh, towards the downside. Okay. And dimension is 10 into 6. Okay. 10 centimeters in length and 6 centimeters wide. And uh, moving further guys. Uh, kidneys are a part of the urinary system. See, calling it as an excretory system is incorrect because there are other organs also which help in excretion, right? So, kidneys are a part of the urinary system. So, which are the organs of urinary system? A pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a single muscular urinary bladder and a small tube. That's what we call it as the urethra, okay? So, see here a pair of bean shaped kidneys okay then the two tubes which carry the urine these are the ureters then the urine is being stored inside a bladder temporarily then this urine is expelled out via a tube which is called as the urethra okay so this urethra runs through the length of the penis in males whereas it uh, opens up right above the vaginal opening in the female body okay so kidneys produce the urine ureters carry the urine and drain into the urinary bladder urinary bladder is a muscular organ which is under the control of the nerves and hence we can control the urge to urinate for some time okay and then the urine can be expelled via tube that's called as urethra okay the act of expelling urine is what we call it as micturition okay micturition perfect now see when I say that the bladder is under the control of nerves, okay. But then the opening and closing of the bladder is also regulated by muscles. And you guessed it right, these muscles are called a sphincter muscles, okay. External sphincter, internal sphincter, can you see? Sphincter muscles, okay. So sphincter muscles actually, they remain in contracted position when the bladder stores the urine. When we want to uh, expel the urine, the sphincter muscles relax and then the urine is expelled out. Okay, okay, that's the job. Now students, let us move forward and try to understand the internal structure of kidneys. Okay, now the kidney is divided into two regions, outer cortex, inner medulla, outer cortex and inner medulla. Okay. Now, if we see uh, that the medulla, the medullary region is made up of numerous triangular regions which are called as renal pyramids or medullary pyramids. Now, if we see that in between these pyramids, the cortex is pushing inwards, pushing itself inwards. Hey na? The cortex is getting extended. These regions are what we call it as renal columns okay the region of the cortex which extends in the medullary region is the renal column okay then students if we further see that through each uh, triangular pyramid through each renal pyramid there is a small extension which has to drain the urine okay and that extension is called as calyx so numerous calyces club together to form a stage like region where the urine is actually being collected and this region is what we call it as renal pelvis. Now renal pelvis narrows down and a small tube comes out of the kidney and this small tube is what we call it as ureter. Okay. Now the main question. Kidneys filter the blood and remove the waste to produce urine. Right. So, the blood has to be brought into the kidneys. It has to be taken away from the kidneys. So, renal artery, which is a branch of the dorsal aorta, okay, uh, that brings in the blood, okay. And the renal vein, it carries the filtered blood away, okay. So, yep, this is actually the structure, okay. Now, if you see here, renal capsule. Renal capsule is the covering which coats the entire kidney. Okay. So, main points to remember over here. Renal cortex, renal medulla. In the medulla, there are pyramids. In between the pyramids, there are renal columns. Then from the pyramids, 
there are calyces calyces uh, unite to form the renal pelvis renal pelvis uh, holds the urine and from there the urine uh, drips down into the ureter okay yeah now students if you see the appearance of the kidney na if you see the appearance of the kidney the pyramidal region or the medullary region shows a striped appearance striped appearance okay and if you see the cortex region it shows you a dotted appearance now why so let us try to understand see i say that kidneys filter the blood but in reality kidneys are not the one which are filtering the blood inside each kidney there are approximately 1 million blood capillaries which actually filter the blood and this tubules this capillaries are what we call it as nephrons nephrons are also called as uriniferous tubules they are also called as the kidney tubules okay so kidneys are having kidneys are having nephrons which are actually the bfu that is the basic filtration units okay so let us understand about this nephrons in much more detail so nephrons are of course the tubular structure i told you it is a capillary like structure and it filters the blood so it actually functions the main task of the kidney and hence we say that nephrons are the structural and functional unit of kidneys now let us see the detailed part of a nephron so nephron is basically having uh, two primary parts an upper cup shaped bowman's capsule and then the second part is what we call it as the tubule okay now tubule has three parts the one which is very closer to the uh, bowman's capsule and the one which is away from the bowman's capsule and both these tubes are very twisted wavy okay so if you see this part is pct that is proximal convoluted tubule and then this one is can you see the distal convoluted tubule and in between we have a loop which is called as the loop of henle okay now if you like try to understand this in much detailed manner so nephron has two parts nephron has two parts upper cup shaped bowman's capsule upper cup shaped bowman's capsule second part tube second part tube near one pct far one dct in the center loop of henle loop of henle yo okay i hope like this rap helps to understand and retain this terms in a better way okay now students if you see the bowman's capsule there is a blood vessel can you see this blood vessel so which is that blood vessel let's try to understand okay so if i like use another color mm, yeah so we know that there is abdominal aorta a branch of abdominal aorta is called as renal artery now it divides to form arterioles right so one such arteriole one such arteriole is what we call it as afferent arteriole can you see the lumen of this afferent arteriole it's little broader now this afferent arteriole divides and redivides divides and redivides to form a cluster a ball of blood capillaries which we call it as glomerulus can you see glomerulus okay now these capillaries unite to form secondary uh, arteriole okay which we call it as efferent arteriole see generally arterioles divide to form capillaries and capillaries unite to form a vein but here we are getting another artery only okay 
so afferent to bring in efferent to take away so we have afferent arteriole entering into the bowman's capsule and efferent arteriole leaving and in between them there is a cluster of blood capillaries which we call it as glomerulus now students because of the difference in the lumen between the afferent and the efferent arteriole okay suppose this is the afferent one and this is the efferent one so see there is a difference in the diameter difference in the lumen and because of which an extreme high hydrostatic pressure is developed within the glomerulus and this actually encourages the filtration of blood at a ultra level and hence the blood gets filtered over here which we call it as ultra filtration okay so see bowman's capsule is a cup shaped hollow ball like structure okay and inside that we have a ball of blood capillaries we call it as a glomerulus if we club both of them together that is bowman's capsule plus glomerulus we get a structure which is called as a malfeasion capsule also called as a renal capsule now these are certain terms which you must remember okay now students coming back Ki why the why the appearance of the kidneys is striped and dotted, okay? So if this is the uh, like let me draw, okay? Mm, let me use another color. Yeah. So if I draw it this way, this part, this part which is which has been marked with black is the cortex region okay and then this part is the medullary region okay so the two components which are the two components bowman's capsule okay bowman's capsule and the pct sorry for, sorry my bad it is, it is, it is, it is. Yeah. And the PCT, RAR, PCT and DCT. Okay. They fall in the cortex region because of which the cortex region gets its dotted appearance. But if we see the loop, okay, if we see the loop of Henry, if we see the collecting duct, okay, collecting duct, this is the collecting duct which collects the urine okay from numerous nephrons of course so they lie in the medullary region and because of which the medulla gets the its striped appearance okay so as i mentioned that the loop of henle let me use another color the loop of henle and the collecting duct gives medulla its striped appearance okay whereas the bowman's capsule Okay, the Bowman's capsule and the PCT and DCT, okay, they give dotted appearance to the cortex. Okay, I hope like this is clear. Guys, if you are understanding, hit on the like button, share, subscribe and post me a year. Perfect. Awesome. Now guys, uh, let us understand the blood supply to the kidneys. Okay, so over here if you see that there is a branch of uh abdominal aorta which is called as renal artery okay so let me use another color yeah renal artery around renal artery will divide to form arterioles okay so then there is this afferent arteriole which enters into the bowman's capsule it divides to form the glomerulus right which this capillaries again unite to form the efferent arteriole right now after traveling a short distance after traveling a short distance okay this efferent arteriole again divides and redivides to form a network of capillaries this network of capillaries surrounds the loop and this network of capillaries is what we call it as vasa recta. Okay. Can you see? 
peritubular capillary network right this entire network of capillaries is what we call as vasa recta cool understood understood i hope you understood so like let me write it over here so that it becomes easy for you renal artery theek hai then from there afferent arteriole then glomerulus then efferent arteriole then further divides vasa recta now from vasa recta what next these capillaries club together to form vein you and joins to form the renal vein renal vein okay renal vein connects whom it connects the uh, inferior vena cava inferior vena cava which carries the blood back to the heart okay so this is how the flow actually occurs okay now students uh, moving further let us talk about the urine formation now urine formation takes place in three steps glomerular filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion so i call it as frs filtration reabsorption and secretion let's try to understand this okay so now as i told that there is a difference in the lumen between the afferent and the efferent arteriole a greater hydrostatic pressure is being created this much pressure is found nowhere in the capillaries in our body only and only in the glomerulus now because of this almost all the liquid part of the blood is getting filtered out in the glomerulus okay so that's the reason why this step is what we call it as ultra filtration okay now what all things get filtered out what do you think what all things get filtered out now everything gets filtered out one useful substances get filtered out and two harmful substances also get filtered out so talk about useful substances so the most useful substances which i would like to mention over here is water right then ions sodium ion chloride ions then glucose amino acids hormones so everything gets filtered out harmful substances nitrogenous waste products like urea it gets filtered out okay that step one now because of this ultra filtration you know what the blood that is moving uh, from the efferent arteriole it has become so thick that the composition of blood has changed altogetherly now this cannot happen we need to restore the volume of plasma right because the blood that is being present right now in the efferent arteriole is simply containing red blood cells platelets and little water little water so we need to restore the composition of the blood and for that the second step is very crucial and this second step is what we call it as reabsorption so all the useful substances okay all the useful substances will get reabsorbed now over here reabsorption takes place in three parts how it takes place one in pct second it takes place in the loop and third it takes place in the dct as well but what all things get reabsorbed so let us like mention that as well okay so if i talk about pct almost two two third volume of water that gets reabsorbed wow that's important then the salts sodium ion chloride ions they get reabsorbed over here okay and then the other stuffs amino acid glucose hormones they get reabsorbed moving further as per the requirements of the body okay some more reabsorption will take place where in the loop so what all things will be reabsorbed of course water theek hai then sodium ions theek hai then let us move further 
if we talk about dct what all things will get reabsorbed over here again if required water and then chloride ions theek hai this is how it will be reabsorbed now we understood ultra filtration that everything useful and harmful was filtered out we understood reabsorption that all the useful substances were reabsorbed okay now because of which the fluid that is over here the glomerular filtrate that is present right now in the tubule it will primarily contain the nitrogenous substances but is that only the thing that our body wants to eliminate no besides that many a times we consume certain medications like nowadays in this uh, covid crisis everyone is taking uh, medications dolo 650 common very common right paracetamol and then many people consume so many antibiotics so these harmful substances need to be eliminated from the body so the cells of the dct they secrete harmful substances now what are these harmful substances so basically uh, I, i need to change the color k plus ions okay harmful drugs okay they get secreted into this dct and that's what we call it as secretion okay so if we talk about let me use another color ultra filtration ultra filtration takes place in the glomerulus so water glucose uh amino acids urea other minerals hormones etc gets filtered out that is step 1 now step 2 step 2 is what filtration ke baad reabsorption okay selective reabsorption now selective reabsorption takes place in different regions pct pct mein kya kya water uh oh sorry sorry for the wrong sign yeah water nacl glucose amino acids hormones etc then after pct the loop loop mein kya hoga h2o plus ne dct h2o plus c and then if we talk about the last that is tubular secretion tubular secretion takes place in the dct so harmful substances like uh, k plus ions drugs uh, antibiotics okay drug like antibiotics example penicillin gets eliminated okay now from here where does the urine pass okay the urine after all these steps that is filtration reabsorption secretion it then gets collected in the collecting duct okay so from the collecting um, collecting duct okay from the collecting duct it is collected in the renal pelvis from renal pelvis it further passes to the ureters ureters send it to the bladder and from the bladder through the urethra it is expelled out that is by micturition right so yeah so when we talk about the color of the urine 
urine is the one which is formed after all the three steps okay filtration reabsorption and secretion after secretion what we get is the urine which gets collected in the collecting duct so the color of the urine is straw colored clear yellow what we call because of a pigment urochrome now the color may vary from diet individual diet volume 1 to 1.5 liter but seasonal variations are also seen and ph is 5 to 8 slightly acidic now people who consume a primary non vegetarian diet their urine is acidic and the one who consume a vegetarian diet their urine is slightly alkaline okay odor odor is faint but if the urine is kept for a long time then a strong ammonia odor is developed due to bacterial activity okay and then composition of urine primarily water i told you the excess of water is always eliminated and then 5% are the solid wastes and uh, urine contains both organic as well as inorganic substances so if we talk about organic urea creatinine uric acid other substances inorganic like salts nacl kcl ammonia etc okay and uh, students there are certain abnormalities which one can easily identify if you properly observe your urine okay if there are blood traces it could indicate hematuria that is the passage of blood okay through the urinary tract it can be due to infection or it can be due to the presence of a kidney stone or maybe a tumor okay hematuria hema matlab blood okay then glucose so if a person urinates and after some time if ants come and lick the urine it can be an indication that the glucose is present in the urine and this is called as glycosuria so basically people who are diabetic and uh, managing sugar in their blood is not possible that time excess of sugar is eliminated via urine as well so diabetes mellitus common thing okay many a times apart from glucose okay apart from glucose some proteins like albumin is also eliminated so it can be because of high blood pressure or maybe increased permeability of bowman's capsule Albumin can be eliminated, and this is called as albumin urea. And then, many a times you see very darkly stained urine, yellowish urine is experienced. So, bile pigments are being eliminated, and it can be due to anemia, hepatitis, or liver cirrhosis. Okay, so these are the conditions to watch out for, which can indicate the health of your body, and uh, the urine output. is definitely regulated by a hormone and that hormone is adh anti diuretic hormone right uh, also called as the vasopressin so posterior pituitary gland posterior pituitary gland produces or secretes this hormone adh and because of this hormone adh what happens is anti anti means against it will reduce the flow of urine okay it will rather not flow it will reduce the output of urine it will promote an absorption of water okay and thus the volume of urine will be reduced but if this adh is not uh, secreted in ideal quantities okay kam banaya ja raha hai so then reabsorption will be limited and the urine output will definitely increase okay so a person who experiences frequent urination due to insufficient secretion of anti diuretic hormone okay uh, is uh, said that the person is having diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus so because of a very dilute urine means having too much of water in the urine the urine becomes tasteless okay so urine is usually saltish in normal people sweetish in diabetic person and it will be tasteless in a person having diabetes insipidus okay and osmo regulation osmo means water water regulation is very simple our body always tries to maintain a stable state steady state which we call it as homeostasis so if the blood water level drops down or the body body water level on the blood body water level drops down okay 
that is being detected by the hypothalamus that is the master switchboard so hypothalamus will send an indication to the pituitary gland that please produce more adh increase the secretion of the adh because of more adh more reabsorption of water and then the water level is brought back to normal if the water level okay rises above normal range okay ah uh, ki bhai uh, bahut zyada pani ho gaya okay then the body i mean then the hypothalamus will trigger the pituitary to produce less adh less adh means more urine okay kidneys reabsorb less water less water means more urine and then again the water will be balanced okay so this is how osmoregulation takes place now many a times due to injury infection and restricted blood flow our body cannot remove nitrogenous waste and these waste products begin to accumulate in our body and uh, if not removed we know that it can cause severe damage it may even lead to death and that time artificial kidney helps right so elimination of this nitrogenous waste using an external machine is what we call it as artificial kidney or dialysis or hemodialysis okay <coughs> so what happens in this procedure is the blood is allowed to pass through a filtrate okay and uh, i mean pass it is allowed to pass through a dialyzing filter now what happens in this dialyzing filter is all the nitrogenous waste okay that gets accumulated and the filtered blood is then pumped back into the patient's body at a time 500 ml of blood can be withdrawn and uh, uh, can be uh, used for dialysis procedure okay and uh, now i hope the entire concept of this chapter is clear if there is any topic which you are stuck upon you can post me your doubts uh, via comment section or you can mail me as well and uh, one more thing your term 2 icsc is going on term 1 was purely objective term 2 is going to be subjective and are you guys prepared for it if not here is a great offer for you all vedantus at fest is back for our uh, uh, republic day celebration starting from 24th of january extending till 31st of january it says all the courses across the platform of vedantu will be offered to you at flat 50% off okay flat 50% off so let me take you to the website okay give me a moment mm, just a sec mm. so if you sorry if you like are 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 if you go to youtube okay i hope like this is visible to you all okay if you go to youtube and if you click on any of any of my sessions any any okay probably any of my sessions for example this is like cbsc wala session if i scroll it further down and if you go to the description box are aisa kyu dikh raha hai ye mujhe Mm. Why am I unable to like see just a sec? हाँ, बहुत ज़्यादा zoom है, ठीक है. Now it's fine. Yeah. So if we go to this one, we can see ICC crash course, full syllabus, right? So click on any of the courses where you want to enroll. So this is like uh, grade nine ICC twenty two. So if you want to change, so for this is grade ten, right? so if i go to grade 10 and select the exam like uh, grade 10 icc crash course full syllabus you know that sounds interesting now if i scroll it further down so here i get two options pro light and classic so all the basic features that is live class for math science test series and assignments their analysis personalized report okay doubt solving in the class and uh, everything everything that you need is available to you with the pro light one 
if you needed out solving app outside vedanta so <clears throat> outside live classes not outside vedanta outside live classes we have pro classic one okay but let me tell you guys uh, if you if you want to try try out a 15 days trial pack okay which is offered to you at 650 right now usually it's for 1500 right now it's being offered to you at just 650 rupees merely 650 rupees and icing on the cake cherry on the pie if you apply my coupon code okay if you apply my coupon code you get additional 15 days extra okay like with this 650 rupee 15 day course plus 15 days means one month subscription at 650 rupees guys what else do you want i will say ki try out a pro light if you can go for 7750 entire course wow that's super but if not try out a 15 day trial pack okay and uh, yeah uh, do you want to like uh, if you want to know anything extra about this course do get back to me via comment section and uh, that's it for the day guys that's it for the day let's meet up in the next session till then allah hafiz milo wapis are ha and uh, remember my coupon code that is mac pro wherein you are going to avail this offer okay 50% off up to rupee 2000 okay and yeah see you soon till then allah hafiz milo wapis and keep watching vedant bye bye take care